Hello, I was tagged by Big Hard Books and Classics uh, on the Don't You Forget About Me tag, book tag, which I appreciate being tagged on because it's been around for a while and uh, I hadn't had a chance to get to it. So thank you for that. It was created by Bookworm Adventure Girl. I'll link to all this stuff in here. There's only four prompts. Uh, but I could probably talk about each one for a very long time. Um, first one, and I will put these in the comments as usual. You decide how many books to share with each prompt. There are four prompts. First prompt, prompt is good, is clean slates. Books you've read that you don't remember anything about. Okay, I could probably go on about this forever. Fortunately, I've kept track of my reading since, what year, 2007. Jeez, that's a long time. So there are tons of books in here because whenever I look at this old list of books to see if I've read something I can't remember, I, I'll see a ton of books on here that I do not remember a single thing about. Unfortunately, a lot of them are poetry books. Um, let me just go randomly here. 2008. Okay, I remember all these. Never mind. If I even, I'm going to be so strict that even if I remember a tiny thing like After Dark by Murakami, I remember it was a, a story collection. So I'm not going to count that. Uh, Devil May Care was a Sebastian Fox uh, fanfic. I know they're not called that. Uh, of a James Bond uh, novel. I remember there was a tennis match in it, but that's something I remember. So I'm not going to count that. Um, oh, I see some I want to answer for the other questions. Sometimes with uh, uh, crime books, for example, even The Wicked by Lawrence uh, Block, you know, I don't remember the specific book, but if I looked at it, if I had the book here, I would remember which one it is because sometimes uh, the titles run together. I haven't found any yet. Waiting for 2010. Okay, here's one by Bruce Sterling called The Caryatids. I don't remember that at all. Philip Jose Farmer at The Stone God Awakens. Title sounds familiar. I don't remember it at all. Could be anything. Some of these, if I talk, think about them for a minute, I can remember them, though, so I guess I won't count those. Uh, <clears throat> well, there's some good books I read back in here. I uh, used to read more crappy, like trendy nonfiction I could see. I read The Drunker's Walk by Leonard Laudenau, which I think is some kind of Wall Street thing. Uh, okay. Oh, I can't believe I read this book. The, Tommy, the Thomas Berryman Number by James Patterson. I think I won that in some kind of lottery or something. That doesn't count either. So this is just turning into me surveying stuff that I don't uh, recall that well. Anyway, have I answered that question yet? Um, I used to read a lot of Jack Vance. Those are good. Ooh, there's a lot of people I don't like anymore that I used to read. Okay, I'm surprised by this. Craig Johnson, I know that writer, I and I know he uh, his series was adapted into a sort of semi-popular streaming series for a while. Apparently I read one. It's called Cold Dish, uh, which probably... Uh, means cold dish uh, like revenge or something but I would have I would have 100% put money on that I'd never read Craig Johnson the mystery writer so I guess I'll count that okay so what is next genie's lamp books you wish you could forget okay I'm looking at them right here hunger games catching fire mocking day they're, they're stupid books they're just not for me they're just dumb um person running around uh, their their books uh, are supposed to be about uh you know people call them uh, a ripoff of um 
battle royale, but they're not because then they'd be good. They're, Suzanne Collins, I believe, was a TV producer. They're really about reality TV. Like The Hunger Games, the first one, about the middle third of the book, is about Katniss, Katniss Everdeen. Uh, deciding what she's going to wear. You know, they're designing her outfit, so she has the, the right outfit to make her big appearance that sort of reflects her heritage. Um, they're boring and they're present tense, and I know people love present tense and they get mad when I uh, say that it's not innovative, it's very old-fashioned, it's very mannered, it's very uh, uh, pretentious. Did I say pretentious twice? Well, it's because they're, it's very pretentious. And how is she running around? How is Katniss Everdeen running around, doing all this stuff, and talking about it at the same time? I'm not a fan of present tense. It sometimes works in, you know, in, in very limited circumstances and when it's very well controlled, which it rarely is. It's just reflexively done by people who think that's how you do it now because we're modern and we don't care about... Uh, how things have been done for centuries and we know how to tell stories now in a way that they will appeal to everyone oh, look at this I read a Nora Roberts book I know why I read this I was talking to some people who were talking it's called Blood Brothers I don't remember the book though I know that I just felt like I should read a Nora Roberts uh, Nora Roberts book once in my life although I did read one of her mystery books too okay that's enough about that alright those are the uh, books, um, not the Nor. I don't wish I'd forgotten, I w don't wish I could forget the Nor Roberts book because I don't remember it, but I do wish I could forget the hum Humber Games books because every time I think of them I get upset. Books you think need more love, Forgotten Gems, I guess I'll go with, there's so many, my whole channel is basically that. I'm going to go with, and they're not truly forgotten, but I'm going to go with the Ross McDonald, Lou Archer Mysteries, which I think are just so fantastic. I think they're so well written. Starting about the fifth or sixth one, I'm not going to Google here because i got my laptop sitting uh, precariously, where they become their own thing. The early ones are a... You know, he started writing them just for money. He, it's not His real name is Kenneth Miller, I believe. Um, I think is how you say it. Um, he wanted to be a serious literary novelist. And a lot of his stories, though, have sort of a, you know, a, a noir sort of bent and all that. So he was able to publish. He published those in his own name. And for money, he started writing the Lou Archer Mysteries, which really, as so often happens when a person is writing one book uh, series for commercial purposes and then their, their serious important work, the the commercial books take over and become what people want to read and then eventually they succumb so around the fifth or sixth book they become their own thing they become not uh raymond chandler ripoffs which are still good they're still fun to read but they become his own thing and these have a lot to do with his personal life the tragic uh, circumstances with his daughter he and his uh, wife Kenneth Miller and his wife Margaret Miller both excellent mystery writers um, she under her own name he under Ross McDonald and his own name and then later they'd start bringing out his uh, Kenneth Miller books under the Ross McDonald pen name too but they had a difficult time with their daughter I won't go in I mean there's plenty of information on online about what kind of parents they were it was apparently they're pretty neglectful you know they're both into their writing and anyway their daughter <clears throat> had a lot of trouble a lot of emotional problems growing up and she died very young and all his books are about that situation they're all about a broken family a missing child uh, in some variation and it really goes to show that It's the quality of writing and it's, the, and it's that matters. It's not how often a writer repeats themselves or copy themselves. or It's like basically variations of the same plot over and over again. And But they're just wonderful. They are just such tragic stories of... Tragic and engaging stories of 
life in California in the 60s and 70s, late 50s, 60s, 70s, sort of broadly speaking, the the era of the young baby baby boom, boomers, um, the generation gap, as they used to call it, and then the older families, <clears throat> usually a older uh, man who hires Lou Archer to find his missing child for some reason. Uh, and then slowly Lou Archer, I mean, for various reasons, not for some reason. Like it could be, you know, that there's money involved or different things. And of, often it's not, as in many private eye books, often what the client wants is not what they really want. And, the, and Lou Archer has to solve these mysteries. He becomes very involved in them. Often he gets fired, and then his second uh, job becomes to be how to get paid to, f to finish to solve the mystery because he really wants to know and he also needs to get paid. So those are fantastic books. I wish more people read them. A lot of people read them. Uh, are they forgotten? I don't know. Forget me not, <clears throat> forget me not, books you will always remember. Okay, so. Did I? Uh, I'm starting to wonder if I did this tag already. I remember talking about, well, if I did it before, I apologize. It'd be interesting to, to pay them back, uh, play them back together and see if I mention them again. Books you'll always remember. I will certainly always remember the early Edgar Rice Burroughs books and Tarzan books, especially the Tarzan books, especially Tarzan of the Apes and Jungle Tales of Tarzan, the, the books that he, Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote about Lord Greystoke, <clears throat> John Clayton, Lord Greystoke, before he was, uh, became civilized, you know, when he was on his own. Those really stuck with me for a long time and still do. Uh, Shogun, I remember very vividly, is one of the first giant-ass books I read. Uh, Shogun, the stand always stays with me. I was really, in high school, I really loved The Stand and, and Salem's Lot. I really don't like <clears throat> Stephen King very much anymore. I've, I've had his books really... I am going to read his new <clears throat> short story collection when it comes out this year. I, I always try and get those. I couldn't, the last one, If It Bleeds which was a collection of novellas I ended up not even finishing that one too and I usually don't finish his crime novels and all the stuff he's doing. Anyway, but those early books, those first five books, I don't know if I would have the same, if they would have the same effect on me now, but I don't remember quite what order I read them in, but The Shining, uh, The Stand, uh, Jerusalem's, Salem's Lot, um, Night Shift, the first collection, all the way through The Dead Zone, which I thought was like a new height. I thought he was moving into a, a better area there but he, I think he kind of flatlined after that although there are some of the later ones I like I'm going to say that and then I like Misery for example which was going to be a Bachman book but before the, the pen name got <clears throat> exposed and I'm going to almost say I think that Richard Bachman's a better writer than Stephen King you know The Long Walk The Running Man I remember those books very well they're completely ridiculous premises The Long Walk is just as stupid as The Hunger Games, but much more compelling, and maybe that's because it's about boys. I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe that's my prejudice on that. Uh, I feel like something's burning. I think it's just somebody's cooking someplace else. I do get paranoid here because I don't know, you know, the area. Okay, so forget me now. Those books I'll always remember. Uh, so, Shogun, I always go back to a lot. It's probably... You know, and I read the other... Um, I read uh, later on, I just said, well, I had to finally get to these others, like Noble House and stuff, and they just didn't do anything for me. I never read King Rat, which I should read, I guess, because people say good things about that, and it's pretty short, but... Books you always remember. That's it. That's the tag. Uh, this one's been around for a while, so I don't think I see people here that... Uh, who knows who I'll tag? Mm, maybe I'll tag... Well, it's not going to go up till Tuesday, so <clears throat> I may add some tags in here uh, later, but probably 
when I do that ahead, I always I always have to go in and take some out because you know in between the time it goes up and the time it, I mean in between the time I record it and the time it goes up, it has to. Um, you know, I'll run into a bunch of uh, versions of it of, from people I tag. But, you know, I'm looking at the one I've got here up. I've got, uh, this is this is not the person who tagged me, but another bu bibliophile reads. I pulled his up so I could read the prompts. He's got some really good books listed here. I don't even think I'm going to write my books down, but he lists the book of Skulls by Robert Silver. But, you know, that's a book that I also always remember, and probably of any Silverberg book. Well, I guess I remember the Valentine's Castle books too, but Book of Skulls in that era, like from Thorns, uh, Nightwings, was it Nightwings? And, but and Book of Skulls really had a big effect on me as a kid. That kind of really stretched what, what, what I thought at that time you could do with science fiction. And is it science fiction? It's hard to say. Anyway, that's the tag. We'll talk again.